Okay guys, so in this video I'm going to show you how to make a very simple and easy sling bow out of this orange PVC electrical conduit here. You can also use standard PVC. I'm just using this electrical conduit because it's thicker. Here are the dim dimensions for it so that you can buy it at the hardware store. It's very cheap. comes in a 4 meter length for about $5. Okay, so first we're just going to mark 25 centimeters on the PVC. Now I'm just going to cut it with these electrical conduit cutters. You can also use a hacksaw, whatever you have that can cut plastic. Okay, so now I'm just going to mark 8 centimeters on the PVC. And we're just going to cut down the middle until we reach the 8 centimeter mark. Okay, so now you're just going to need a heat gun. I bought this for $20 at the hardware store. Or you can use a stove top. You just need to heat it up enough until it gets nice and floppy. As you can see, this is ready for molding. It's nice and floppy. Okay, so now for molding it, you just want to put on a pair of gloves and you want to bend it into a W shape. Okay, just like I'm doing here, as you can see. And now you just want to hold it until it cools down. So once the PVC is cooled down, as you can see, it's very hard. And I'm just going to be attaching some of these exercise bands that you can see. Um, they have a 50 pound draw weight. They're very strong and they're great for this sling bow. I'm going to cut them at 25 centimeters long because that's the draw length of my arm. Okay, so now I'm just going to drill holes in each side of the forks, as you can see. Okay, so now all I'm going to do is get some of this cord I have lying around and some elastic bands. I'm going to tie a knot in a piece of cord, thread it through the hole in the fork, and I'm just going to tie another knot. Okay, so I've done the same thing on both sides. Now for attaching the bands, all you want to do is press the knot firmly into the uh, middle of the rubber bands and then push it in about a centimeter in with a screwdriver okay so now I'm just going to cut an elastic band down the middle and I'm just going to wrap it around and around the end of the rubber this is creating a tourniquet and it's going to pull very tightly on the rubber bands holding them in place when you draw back Okay, so I'm just going to finish it off with a half hitch knot, and that's going to hold the rubber band in place. Now you just want to cut off the excess. Okay, so I've done the same thing on both sides. It's a very strong system. Okay, so now I'm just going to cut a piece of rope with two knots in each side of it. This piece is about nine centimeters long. Remember to melt the ends of your knots. This is gonna stop them from undoing and the sling bow will pretty much never come apart as long as you do it like this. Okay, so I'm just going to put the two knots into each end of the uh, exercise bands and we're going to use the same tourniquet system as we did for attaching the bands to the forks. Okay, so now we're just going to cut off the excess. Alright, so now I'm just going to tie a D-loop. If you don't know how to tie a D-loop, there's plenty of tutorials already available on YouTube. I'm just going to show you quickly in fast motion. So basically a D-loop is just pretty much two uh, knots tied on the rope. These knots are actually called clove hitches and it creates a little loop that looks like a D. And of course you want to melt each end of your uh, knots because a D-loop is something you definitely don't want undoing when you're drawing back uh, any sort of bow.
Okay, so now as you can see, your arrow knock fits in between the two clove hitch knots, and then you can attach a manual release aid that you can buy from an archery shop or online. If you don't have a release aid or if you can't afford one or there's none in your area then what you can do is just simply take a piece of rope tie lots and lots of knots in it all bunched up together okay now you just want to tie that around your D-loop Okay, so now as you can see when the notch is in, uh, you've got something to grip onto so you can pull it back and release and it's not just going to slip out of your fingers. Okay, so it's pretty much ready and let's give it a test shot. Alright, so I'm just going to have a test shot here. We've got the arrow uh, notched in and we'll just see what it can do. Clip on the archery release and fire. okay guys so now I'm just gonna spray paint it black okay so I've also wrapped the handle in this army cord and if you are doing that make sure you leave a little bit at the bottom so you can attach this fishing rig uh, this fishing rig tutorial will be in a new video so make sure you subscribe to my channel backyard armory okay so now it's completely finished uh, it's a very good uh, weapon let's go out and test it okay so now we've got a broadhead tip on here these are very dangerous and we're just going to see how much penetration we can get into our archery foam target let's test okay so it went all the way through that's very impressive very very powerful this is quite a lethal little weapon as you can see only just got stopped by the fletchings otherwise it would have just kept on going so now we're just going to uh, take a coconut and see if we can penetrate it. Coconuts are very accurate to a human skull so we see if we can penetrate it and yes no problem at all. Alright this here is a takedown arrow. I'm going to have a tutorial on my channel Backyard Armory in about a week's time on how to make a takedown arrow. Uh, this one is very cheap costs less than five dollars to make to buy a takedown arrow it's about $20 each and this one's a very inexpensive great easy to put together little arrow it's dead straight and it fires perfectly